Welcome to the Russell Hance Show. We have a very special guest tonight. It is Kelly Wentworth. How you doing, Kelly? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I've never met you, but uh, I've been keeping track of you, been following you. Kind of, uh, I don't know if that's like, what would, would that would, would <laughs> What would that be? Following you? Should I be scared? I'm, I'm keeping track of you, keeping tabs on you. Stalking. Stalking. Yeah, that's what it is. Stalking. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but there's 14 different castaways that the first time they played, they didn't even make the jury. And then the second time they played, you know, they got to play a second time. Uh, like, I don't know if you know this, but Rob, Boston Rob, was one of them. So you can make yourself okay. pretty legendary by playing a second time but most of these people on this I list guess suck so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> speak your mind okay <laughs> i mean um, you got you yeah know. but you know what good not everyone can be a professional the first time they go out there like you some of us just do mm-hmm. a really shitty job like me mm-hmm. <laughs> but you got it you got the opportunity to play again and the thing is i've openly said now i don't know you have we ever met we've never met uh never met you never met me uh we don't know each other and i openly said that you were either on the fence or it was going to be a really tough decision with casting and cbs to throw you out there as a legend what do you think about that Mm. wow that's quite the honor coming from you um I mean, I appreciate that. I don't know. I feel like that's, that's tough shoes to step into. You have people like Three and your favorite mm-hmm. person, Sandra, mm-hmm. and Barb, Definitely. and a lot of other women who are pretty amazing. So, well, yeah. I don't know. You but, do I have mean, names. I'd be down. I'd yeah. Be down for sure. You do have names like that. But the thing is, uh, you have some accomplishments. I don't just throw that name out there lightly for sure. I think a legend season is going to be a, a very. Uh, you know, it's an honor to be on the legend season and the people that get, sh- you know, that's chosen for that type of season. I hope they don't do the same uh, thing that they did with game changers. I know you're not going to be you're more socially accepted than I am and you're not going <laughs> to throw these names out there. But I know that you when you see some when you seen some of these cast members, you don't have to say any names. Did you think, huh, I wonder why there's a game changer? I mean, did you ever? Yeah, of course, of course, I did. But you're right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it nice this mm-hmm. time and not say any names. But I'm sure that everyone felt the same way. And um, it, you know, maybe they didn't get the initial people that they wanted. Maybe that's why they had to make some changes. Yeah, I hope that they don't do that same thing with uh, legends. That's why I'm taking it serious. I'm, I'm talking about it quite a bit. I don't know if you heard uh, Coach and I. But we broke down a legend uh, cast. Uh, so, you know, the thing is with you, uh, you happen to have a record that I had. Did you know that? Yeah, so I was going to bring that up, actually. Uh-huh. I think I beat your record for most votes canceled out by an idol. Is that true? That is true. Mine was eight. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, mine was nine. So that's pretty cool. Do you I also? About that. Do you also know? <laughs> yeah, but uh, th- that's the thing is you've dealt. The thing is when you played, you you played looking for idols. You played making fake yeah. idols. You played very aggressively when it comes to the kind of the t- same things I did. You know, we if we yeah, had, if we true. ever had a yeah. baby, we would have to name the baby Idol. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Hidden immunity idol, or just I would just name idol. Him idol. Just, just one name, <laughs> <laughs> right? Just okay, Idol yeah. Hans. <laughs> I don't know if you change your name to uh, Hans, but oh, we we could no, just put no. uh, 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 Kelly. Uh, let's see, what was his? What, what would the baby's last name be? Hans or Wentworth? Uh, I don't know. Well, I am actually getting married, and I'm still debating if I'm keeping my last name. So. Well, but that's the whole other thing. Let's get back on track. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a baby. It's Idol. The name's Idol. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> but it's survivor okay. stuff. Yeah. Okay. A survivor well, how baby. How did you find? I found. You found I found six idols career? in two seasons, honey. That's crazy. 
that's, that's pretty nuts. That's yeah. pretty nuts. People can go out there and, you know, tie me or, you know, do do as well as me. But tw- two times in a row, you know, just just having them come to you like that. I mean, it was pretty, you know, I went out there and I act like it was a, you know, no big deal. But trust me, it was getting to me. I was like, this is amazing. I couldn't believe it was happening, but it was. So it, it, it was a good opportunity. Describe Describe the feeling when you found your first idol. Because I was oh, so stoked, obviously. It was. But it's hard to explain to people. It's like I, it's, it's such an intense rush. Yeah, I, I said uh, openly, which it it's almost felt like that. My first baby being born, like it was such a <laughs> wow. rush. It was such. It was it was weird. It was a weird feeling because you know I'm thinking back now and I'm trying to capture that feeling you know, as it went down. And I can remember looking up in the tree and seeing it there first. When I seen it there, I didn't, I didn't want to just grab it and pull it out. You know, everybody was standing all around me. So, uh, yeah. Cause when you see the footage of it, that's not my hand going up there, grabbing it. I mean, they don't have a camera right there, you know, so, so <laughs> yeah. that's somebody that else's hand. It. Everyone would know. Yeah, right. They can't do that. They can't. Yeah. So, but they, I understand they have to do what they have to do to get the footage to just show the little things like that, which is fine. I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. But uh, when I first seen it, I seen it and then I stopped looking. And I just kind of like, it's almost like seeing your grandma naked for the first time. And you're like, turn away. <laughs> you turn away real fast. That's never happened to me. <laughs> okay. You turn away real fast and you're like, oh, boop, I, didn't, I didn't see that. No, I didn't see that. You try <laughs> almost kind of like put it out of your mind that you just seen that. But you know you just did and you have to deal with it. Your mind starts racing a hundred miles an hour. It's it, it's like you know it's an amazing rush. Yeah, I feel the same. It's hard to describe. And then you're like, oh, did anybody see me or where do I put it? Like you guys, I've said this before. You're lucky because you have somewhere to stick it. Like women, we're kind of at a disadvantage. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, some of us guys don't have nowhere to stick it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, just saying, you do, you could potentially. So I'm just saying, some of the fellers out there, <laughs> if they stick it where you're supposed to stick it, it would be like, wait, what's up with that? That wasn't there before. <laughs> that wasn't there before. Oh, gosh, this is taking a weird turn. Okay. <laughs> right? So, yeah, that's yeah, so, yeah, that's an exciting thing, uh, you know, the idol thing. And you've also had... The record, you know, you can't be a legend without not having records. And you have the record for, uh, in a single tribal council, most null votes, 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 who knows <laughs> most <laughs> votes yeah. with nine, yeah. nine yeah. votes. Okay. And mm-hmm. you have 12 in a season. Did you know that? Yeah. You did know that? Do Bit you talk hurt. about this often? Is this like on your no? Is it on your bedpost? No. Like you have things written down? No, but I, no, but I think I am the only female to successfully play two idols. You are the only female to successfully play two idols. That's correct. That was yeah. The ne- that's pretty cool. That was my next uh, note, by the way. Whoa! <laughs> look at you with all your facts. My okay, fa- you know more than I do. In fact, well, do you, <laughs> do you know that you're the only female that won a challenge in Cambodia? An event, individual challenge? Do you know that? Are you sure? Is that Kelly true? is the only female to win individual immunity challenge in Cambodia. If I wrote that down, it's true. <laughs> okay, I believe you. I, I mean, didn't think that, about that, I guess. Wow, you really... Pumping me up here. I feel good I mean, about I'm just, right now. I'm just saying that, and what I want the the listeners to know is that we don't know each other, and I give credit where credit's due. That's the kind of guy I am, and it, and me and Bryce brought this up. You know, you I don't know if you heard our podcast, but you became the queen. You know, regardless if you get married or not, <laughs> yeah. that's neither here nor there. You were my <laughs> queen, and Bryce. Okay, and uh. <laughs> Bryce brought your name up, and I was like, you know, she she did all these things. I mean, she's did things that other people, ha- you know, hasn't done. That So that, by definition, is a legend. See, see you didn't know you okay, were going to. Okay, well, I'll take it then. Yeah, you didn't King know. King Russell has spoken. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm just saying a lot of people out there are probably listening and saying, no, she's not a legend. She's, you know, she, no way she's a legend. But if you tell me, I'll have a discussion with someone and if they say, oh, well, Andrea's a legend. I'll be like, why? Because she played 10 times. I mean, tell, tell me the reason why. <laughs> you know, you cannot tell me somebody's a legend just because maybe you like her because she's been on TV so many times with Survivor. That doesn't make him a legend. What makes him a legend is extraordinarily moves, extraordinarily great moves or difficult moves. I mean, they have some moves out there that were legendary. That's, now, that's what, that's what Jeff tried to do with the game-changing thing. He was like, oh, you know, just mm -hmm. because your moves didn't work doesn't make you a game-changer. Like JT's move, trying to give me an idol to save myself and not knowing that, uh, I was in control of that alliance. Remember when he gives gives me the idol? Well, that it, just think about it this uh, way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just think about it this way, though. That is an amazing move. If that move would have worked, JT would have been a genius. Right. If I was really on the down, and he would have gave me that that idol, and it would have saved me, then I would have went over there loyal to JT because I'm loyal to my alliance. I've always have been. So I would have been loyal to JT. He would have had me, and no telling what would have happened from then on out, you know? You're right, but the thing about Survivor is that you only know what you know. So you can't just be – I mean, that was a, either a big win or a big loss, and it was a big loss for him. But I guess, I guess, yeah, you have to take those risks. However – Yes, if it doesn't I work, I would have done something like right. that. <laughs> yeah, well, if it doesn't yeah. work, then it yeah. does. It doesn't make you. A le now that's the difference. Now I can get. I can get on board with JT as a game changer. I can get on board with it. There's a discussion about it. You know, you can have that discussion. Uh, if that move would have worked for JT, and specifically just talking about him for some reason, but if that move would have worked, yeah. then then he would have been a legend. He would have been in legendary status because he would have went further in the game. And it was it was a legendary move, but it didn't work, so it just became a bonehead move. So that's there's a fine line between bonehead and legendary. Survivor is I don't know. Do you think Survivor is easy? I think Survivor is just so hard. It's one of the hardest things know. I've ever done in my life, and and the thing is, oh yeah, it's one of the most. It's the mentally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life because. You're trying to control everything, whether you're not controlling it or not. In your mind, you're you're trying to stay in control, so you don't really know what's going on. You, you if you think you know what's going on, you you don't know for sure if that's what's going on, and it just drives you crazy. If you're a good player, no, yeah. If this is how I put it, if you're a good player, if you're a great player, then it will get to you mentally. Because your mind is constantly moving. If you go out there and just float along and it looks like you're just on vacation, then you're not a good player. To me, you're not a strategic player. You're just out there hoping that you get to the end of the game. There's a lot more to that game than, than uh, luck. Some people think it's luck. I, I disagree with that. I think a little bit is luck, but there's a lot uh, that you have to drive it yourself. You, you have to make things veer towards the way you want it to veer do you agree yeah i do agree i do think there is some element of luck i mean just even from the tribe you start on to a swap to just being in the right place at the right time however it you have to like you said be the driver of your own vehicle or your own game if you will and mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad to hear you say it's hard because I feel like you made it look very easy mm -mm. and I think people don't realize, even new people that go out there that I end up talking to after, don't realize until they've done it, really, how hard it is. And it, it is mentally so exhausting. Like, I lost so much weight, and it wasn't because I wasn't eating food. Yeah, you lost 31 I was pounds. not sleeping and always thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 31. Always, thinking, always wondering what to do, what to do, what's the next thing, who to talk to. Yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, the thing is... Uh, 31. Somebody asked me... Uh, just now I was talking to some fans and they asked me what the, the advice and when I when I wrote down the advice I was like well that's not really good advice I put don't trust anyone and that's really not good advice because because yeah. you have to trust someone you have to have that person because you will go crazy 
if you have if you just not trusting anyone in that game. It's very true. Yeah, I think my biggest piece of advice, and I don't know how far, far this will get you, but every day is a new day. So even if you feel down and out, like you got to get back up and rally the next day and figure something out. Like you can never just lay down and die. Right. Be flexible. Yeah, and you played with your dad the first yeah. time. Now I, you see, that's not. I know. Look, they they had to give you a. You didn't make the jury the first time, and. The thing is, no. it's not fair at all when you play with a loved one. Because you know what? If I my first time would have been a loved one, there's no way I'm making the jury. Because I am falling on that sword. I am taking it, no matter what, I'm making sure that my loved one gets further in that game. You know, unless it's Brandon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Survivor is an individual game. No, nah, I take, I take Brandon to the final. You can't worry about anybody else. Especially... Wait, what did you say about... What I said, unless it's Brandon. What, did you, what were you saying? No, I said, I'll take Brandon <laughs> to the final. Stop it. <laughs> so, no, go Stop ahead. It. Stop it. No, so, no, didn't I'm that affect that. you with the way you played, though, your dad? I was going to say, yeah, you can't. You... Yeah, of course. And it's so funny because as I get older, you know, as a child, like your parents, it's whatever, you know, they look after you. But as I get older, I worry about my parents. You know, I'm worried about... So I was worried about how he was doing, what was going on, and was he getting along with people, and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, I, I, um, I, I would recommend anybody, you know, play by yourself. Don't play with a loved one. Not because it's, I don't know, it's just so hard. And I love my dad so much, and so it was a great experience to have. But as far as being able to win it, I mean, look at who won, Natalie Anderson. Her sister was first out. She didn't have to worry about anybody except herself. Right. That's a big, that's a... You know? I mean, yeah. you got to think about that. That's a, uh, a good point because when you have to worry about your loved one, you can't play that game. You just can't. Not if you really love your loved one. I mean, you go out there and you vote out your own no. mom, then, you know, <laughs> you, got, you got other issues. <laughs> you know? I'm just hey, saying, I, I don't know Sierra. if that ever happened well, or anything. I <laughs> I don't know if that has ever happened or anything, but, but who would do that? You know, that can't, that's, that never I happened. don't know. Yeah. That's tough. That's <laughs> tough, man. I don't know. They, just, they need to do but, They need to make yeah, another show for them to. <laughs> Stop. I love Sierra. I'm not going down that road. You can keep your thoughts. No, I'm just saying, road. I didn't say no Sierra's names. My girl. You said that. Okay. I didn't say okay. no names. I didn't well, was, I was everybody gonna, knows. I can't give her Come props on. on my show. Let's not say that. I call her Laura's okay. daughter. <laughs> okay. We'll leave it at that. Let's move on to the next thing. So, so uh, you have the look of a pageant girl. Are you a pageant girl? Ew, really? No, I'm totally a tomboy. You don't think you have the look of a pageant girl? You haven't been told that before? No. No, not at all. In fact, everyone, uh, so blood versus water, when we were all at the, you know, you have to do all that pre stuff where you go mm-hmm. and sit there and yada yada. Yeah. Um, I would always wear like a baseball cap and it was a Seahawks hat because mm-hmm. I'm from Seattle Bleh. and everyone once we started the game told me they thought that I was a cheerleader a Seahawks yes. cheerleader and I'm like I'm the furthest thing from a cheerleader like I play soccer like I grew up on a farm like no 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 I would have thought you was like Miss Alabama or something <laughs> what because I have blonde hair <laughs> uh, you just have that look that's oh, that's yeah, a compliment no. though because the, the Alabama girls okay. they, they ain't no joke okay well that's, I appreciate that Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Sounds like you have some experience there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I ain't saying I ain't going there for sure. That's another podcast for another day. <laughs> so, so, okay. So did you hear Bryce? Did you hear that interview where you became my queen? Yeah. Well, I I saw tweets about it, so I had to listen. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I heard that. How did that come about? That was an interesting podcast right. you guys had, talking about kings and queens and the people in the fields. <laughs> you like my people in the fields? Yeah, uh, hey, you gotta have no. you gotta have workers. I know the king has all his little stuff in place, his kingdom in place. But you were one of my, you know, I had wine pours. You know, people pour my wine for me, and Bryce was one of them. He didn't like that. Yeah. Bryce, Bryce didn't want to be a wine pourer. I'm a wine pour. Oh, what did he want to be? My side oh. hoe. Oh, he's my, that's he's right. my side okay, hoe. That's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got Too so many I, people to keep track of. I got Sari, Poverty, and you as my queen. 
I got two good wine pours. What was it? Yeah, who's Who that? was it? It was uh, Jeffra and uh, who was the other one? No, Jeffra and uh, I don't know. I don't know. She's forgettable. She <laughs> played this season. <laughs> She's a game changer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, no. oh, I know who it is. Are you ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Haley. Haley. Yeah. Haley. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. She's game. She's gonna play in Game Changer too. <laughs> Stop it. What? I. You know, I, Jeff Crow called her the sexiest survivor. He ever. called her the. Se- I seen that. He called her the sexiest yeah. survivor ever. That's a little much, though. Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> she has a great bod. She has well, a great bod. The prettiest Very girl fit. to ever Very play petite. Survivor. I don't even know her name, mm-hmm. but you might better help me out. In my opinion, okay. the prettiest girl to ever play, okay. she's stunningly beautiful, was Miss that Miss Utah girl. What was her name? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, and I think she's also really beautiful. She has blonde hair. Um, her name is, hold on, uh, Angie. Angie. Angie, I think. Yeah, I heard some stuff about her at Ponderosa. Angie, right? Isn't that her name? Or did I mess that up? <laughs> I heard some stuff about her at Ponderosa. Okay, let's... Again, that's for another podcast. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. It's not my business. Uh, we're not going to yeah. talk about it. We'll talk about Ponderosa, though. She is beautiful. She is yeah. beautiful. So, she, okay. to me, she was she was the, uh, the, the like, stunning beautiful. She was so pretty. I don't she know if you re- I don't know if you remember this for Miss... She won Miss Utah, then she, she went on for Miss USA. And I, uh, I don't know if you've seen Miss USA, but... When the the announcer was talking, the whole time he was talking, they put her right behind. So you was seeing her the entire time he's talking, you know, because they picked a visually stunning girl for for camera purposes, uh, and they chose her. But she didn't even make the top ten or twenty. She probably came dead last because I her interviews were probably horrendous. Well, she can't. You just because you're pretty. Stop. Just because you're pretty, <laughs> don't mean don't mean don't. It doesn't mean everything's pretty like that inside that brain. But yeah, but um, I don't I don't know her, so she could be a genius. I don't know. I'm just that's just my opinion. My opinion usually are wrong. Yeah, I because I, <laughs> I thought hey, I won twice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and in all fairness, in all fairness, as a fan, I think he probably should have won at least one season. So oh, okay, yeah, at yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. So tell I me. I know it doesn't make you feel better. No, we'll go. We'll move on. <laughs> so tell. Okay. So tell me, uh, who is the visually stunning guy that's ever played Survivor ever? Oh wow! Yeah, they they people want to hear this. Because I'm straight oh up saying gosh. the real deal. Because you're beautiful. You're in the top ten for sure. But I'm saying the real oh, deal right. here. The real deal. So I'm saying, okay, the most stunning besides me is who? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, so here's the thing. As I got older, I think that things changed for me. So when I first started watching Survivor, I was, what, 14 years old or something like mm-hmm. that? So I thought, like, Colby, like yeah, I thought he was yeah. so dreamy. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really into Ethan, which is so crazy. That is weird. I don't know. <laughs> that is Isn't weird. that weird? No, what yeah. is it now? I'm sorry, I don't what know. is it now? Looking back, who is now. that pretty boy okay. face? You know who I think it is? Okay, who? I think it's uh, Rocket Science, John Fincher. I think that boy is so pretty. I'm like, I told yeah, him, he is, he is I told him one time, looking. my man, yeah. man. He's so pretty, but he has no game. I'm going to have to tweet him this. Aww. I'm going to tweet him no game. <laughs> He's my boy, though. But but it's like, man, oh, okay. you, you're so pretty. You need to be able to just, like, they should be a, like a magnet, like, just sticking to you. <laughs> just girls sticking to you all, yeah, over, I mean, all over the world. I think him and Poverty's getting married, by the way. They're getting married. I, at least that's what I've seen on social media. That's so exciting. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that'd be um, a... Okay, actually, let me see here. It's hard for me to think back on people. Name some other people. Uh, I feel like they always have really uh, good-looking okay, women. I'll and name, the men. I'll, yeah, and the name just suck. The men suck, right? Uh, no, okay, I'll, suck, I'll name the two. Like the, 
I'm going to name the two that, uh, well, one that you just played a game with. You played a little okay. Candy Crush. Did that air yet? Let's let's go ahead and give you some some props no. here. It didn't air yet. Okay, so you you about <laughs> no, to go on this on uh, CBS right Candy Crush with yeah. Joe Joe right? Yeah, yeah. You don't sound too excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you said CBS as if I'd be able to go on any other network and do any other show. <laughs> oh, I'm, you could do it. I'm sure so Naked right. and Afraid would love to have you. Ew, no, never. I, I have to draw the line somewhere, and Naked and Afraid is just way too ridiculous. Um, okay, Joe. Mm-hmm. I like Joe. Not my personal style. I don't really like long hair on men. I, I tend to like a little, like, uh, more, uh, hmm, uh, just, I don't know. I don't like long hair on guys. <laughs> just leave it there. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But women with love him. Yeah, like, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we'll just move on, you know, from him because that, like, CBS needs to do. But so, <laughs> it's not Joe, is it? I mean, okay. not Joe. I, I like Joe, not Malcolm. Uh, who is it? I want to know that rugged. Okay. You like that you know rugged look? Think, you know who I think? Yeah, you know who I think is is pretty handsome. Um, my girl Abby Maria that I played with. Uh-huh. You know, she dated Pete for a right, while. Right. I think he was a very attractive man. Really? You putting him in yeah. like the, oh, is one of the best? I mean, I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think of other people. I'm trying to go through my, hmm, trying to think back. Trying to go through your what? Go through your, your calendar. I'm and trying your to rack my brain over here. <laughs> right. Here, yeah. Do I need to get on Google right now and do mail contestants? Let me think of Listen, a good Listen, I'm into one. darker features. Mm-hmm. Darker features. James. So has darker James is hair. James no, no, do it. No. <laughs> James got darker features. That's for damn sure. That's my boy too. <laughs> one time, okay, James. Let, let me tell you his story. James came. He okay. came. He came to the house one time, and he was like, we was going out downtown Houston, and uh, he stayed with okay. me for a couple of days, and he is like a go- Greek god when he takes his shirt off. Like the dude does not work at. This is hard to believe. He does not work out. Okay. He does not. No. He, he, he does not work out. He doesn't take steroids. He doesn't do none of that stuff. He he does other drugs, but it ain't steroids. So, you know, oh. he's not healthy. He smokes. He eats <laughs> He eats donuts like it's going out of style. The dude, that was God-given right there. And and he was, yeah. uh, he was uh, I can remember in high school, he's from where I'm from, and they had a guy named Marshall Falk. You might have heard of him. He played yeah, in NFL he played for 15 St. years. Louis, right? Yeah, right. He did for a little while. So, and okay. and he was number two out of uh, Louisiana. Number one was James Clements. He was a monster in football, and he, you know, just decided to do what everybody else does in college: party and has a good time. But that body, that that's that is not. He don't even work on that. So anyway, I don't I- know. That's real. So anyway, he was at my house. We was about to go out, so he's changing to go out, and uh, he has a suitcase okay. right there in the living room. He takes his shirt off. My little girl, she was like six years old at the time. He takes his shirt off and he's putting another one, and she's just staring. She's like six years old, and she don't stop staring. And then I'm and oh, really, she's, and then I just I see her staring, so I'm like, what is she gonna say? Because she's she is my daughter. So so I'm like, what is she about to tell him? She said, hey. He looked at her, you know, six foot three frame, looking down on her. He's like, "Hey, what do you want? What's up?" He, she said, "Why are you so black all over?" <laughs> <gasps> he Stop said, it. "He said I was born like this." <laughs> she like, Stop it! Because no. you know, because him without a shirt on is like physical. You know, it just looks looks <laughs> crazy amazing. But yeah, so Stop it. she was six. So I don't know. If, I kids don't know. have no filter. That's what I love about kids. Sometimes is the stuff that comes out of their mouth is oh, yeah. incredible because they just don't hold back. Yeah, my little girl <laughs> walked so in. Funny. My little girl walked in one time with me and my ex-wife, and she said, "What you do to my mama?" <laughs> oh God, no! Oh. <laughs> what you do? Oh. She was. I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, that's a. <laughs> of course she didn't. <laughs> she was just thought I was hurting her mama. What you do to my mama? Oh, oh God. 
Yeah, oh, she's wow. Up. She's okay. Up. So, uh, so oh, we, let's get back to Survivor. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> in the two seasons you've played, okay. <laughs> in both seasons, I'm sure it was uh-huh. the second one where you're going to be able to answer this question. What was your favorite okay. move and why? A favorite move? Like, you know how you have that? You see, I can... I get asked this question all the time, and it's that one move to where you felt so amazingly good. Like for me, it was uh, kind of like you did when I used the uh, uh, I used the idol to get Kelly out the blunt, the other Kelly. I don't know her last name, mm-hmm. but to vote her out, and then eight people put my name down. So that moment right. was one of the greatest moments, and then for my whole career of Survivor, what was your greatest moment? what you felt kind of like that? Well, mine is similar and I just feel like it seems so obvious to say it, which is why I don't want to say it, but it's the truth is when I played the idol and nine people had voted against me. And the reason that it was so satisfying is because there were people that were lying to me and telling me they wanted to work with me. And I knew they were, and they just would, you know, obviously wouldn't admit they were voting for me, but we had previously been working together. So when the name came up and all the votes were against me, it was just so satisfying, kind of like, screw you. It was like, an that's why amazing was, feeling. just made me, yeah, exactly. That's why I kind of freaked out. People were like, oh, it's so annoying how Kelly celebrated and blah, and, blah. and I'm like, yeah, but you weren't there. You don't get it. You don't know what it's like to play a game and think you can trust people yeah. and you can't. And then Man. it comes out that like, oh, yeah, they did lie to you and they're trying to get you out. And yeah, like, and by the way, Bye. sorry, it's not happening. I didn't celebrate. By the way, I was playing my social game, but that didn't work either. So I just sat there and took it. I just sat there and took in that, all that great energy, and I didn't celebrate. I didn't do nothing. I was just like, I didn't pump my fist in the air because oh. I was playing a social game. That's Well, good for yeah. you. Yeah. I couldn't help it. It, it was so much like just coming out, just the relief. I just, it, I don't know. I could, can't even explain it. No, it is. It's a great, it's, it's, uh, you know, I've been an athlete all my life and I, I was on, uh, high levels of the things that I've done. I won the state championship and different things like that. And that moment was greater than any moment I've ever felt in any sports I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So it was just, you know, it was like my own, like I just won the, you know, the national championship or I just, you know, hit the, uh, you know, Grand Slam in the World Series. It was like, I have to think that that's how that feels, you know? You and, know the one thing that would feel greater than that? What's that? Just reading your names and winning oh, a million yeah. dollars. <laughs> oh, I would, I would probably, you know, I would definitely break down because it's, it's taken so much from me. The game has given and taken so much from me. That moment, if that moment would ever happen, that would be an amazing an amazing thing that I can't I can't even comprehend but we have to be we're very blessed to be to be able to even have that moment you know to be a part of something like that I agree yeah I do agree it's um it's even cool to be able to just look you know just be able to look back on it and like no one can ever take that from you right and you'll never be able to explain it to someone but you know in your own mind, like how hard you were working and what that felt like. And right. it's a cool memory to always have. Yeah. And you played with Spencer. When you went out there with Spencer, I thought that he, I thought that he was going to do a great job. Great, you know, I thought he was a great player and he didn't get any votes at the end. What happened there? <laughs> so the thing with Spencer, it's so tough because Spencer, he just was constantly playing both sides. So he was always in the middle. So he, he finally did choose a side when he went with Jeremy and Tasha. But for mm-hmm. a long time, you know, he was playing the side that I was on. And then he would kind of try and work with Joe. And then he'd go back to Jeremy. And I think it just caught up to him. Like, it was too much. Right. Does that make sense? It's, it's hard to explain. It was like there's such a fine line of what you can and can't do and what people will accept and what they won't. Yeah, you think he was maybe playing too hard? Is that a, is that a yeah, thing? Yeah, I think so. I think it was too much. Yeah, it was it was too sneaky. It was because no because by the end of it, like nobody felt like they could trust him. You know, and you know how you're talking about how you have to have somebody you can trust and feel like there's somebody that has your back. Like everyone felt like 
he never had my back and he never really mended fences with people. Yeah. You know, like you can stab somebody in the back, but you have to apologize. Like you always have to tailor to other people's needs and feelings. Right. So, so did you, was there anybody yeah. out there that you trusted though, that you, on your second time you played, did it, was there anybody that you were like, this person, you would say it publicly, this person is not writing my name down at any point in any time. Was there anybody like that? I mean, I feel that way, but it's, it's, it's hard to know because I, I don't know. I probably would have written anyone's name down at any point if I had to. Right. I mean, of course, if you later. have to, I get that. So, I get it if you have to, but I'm saying, if you, did you feel like I could really trust this person uh, with anybody out there? Because with me, yeah, with me, I definitely could have. With me, I knew I could have put trusted poverty. You can even watch some of the secret scenes with her talking to Amanda, saying, "I trust him, and, and you know he's been good to me." And so, and you, I, I trusted Natalie. I trusted Natalie White more than anybody. I trusted my third okay. time I played. I trusted Krista. I trusted Stephanie. You know, you have uh -huh. to have, I trusted Mick. I trusted Jason. I, you know, those people, I think it would have, yes, of course, somebody's going to write your name down. It's a possibility. But I went with the best uh, variable, and that was me trusting these people. You know, and this is who, if I trust you, it's way easier for me to play with you when I trust you, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only person I really trusted was Sierra, honestly. Really? I mean, sorry, Laura's daughter. Laura's daughter. You trusted sorry, Laura's daughter? I did, yeah. Let me go throw up right now. Hold she on never wronged second. me. She never wronged me. Let me go throw up right now. I just threw, <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> I just threw up in my own my mouth. say something like that. How yeah, you trust a girl that stabs your own mom in the back? I don't know, man. That's 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 deep right there. Yeah. Well, she ain't playing again, right. so <laughs> she's done. <laughs> oh she's she's so confident. I, I mean, how Maybe. could she? Play? How? Yeah, she did her thing. She did game changer. She's not a. She it. She's. If she's a legend, she's a legend because she's the the you know did the worst possible thing in the history of the game and vote out your own blood. You know, I mean, your mom, yeah. your mom. Yeah. I can even understand more but with that your will dad. Never go away. But your that mom. Will never go away. She'll always have When that. you have she always did when that. you see these things in these sports athletes, they always say hi mom. They never say hi dad. They say hi mom. You get, you know my my ex-wife, she gets all kind of stuff for Mother's Day. I don't get nothing for Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm then sorry, you're going to go that, and though. vote out that person that everybody holds up in high you know, you vote out your own mom? Anyway, I'm going to do a whole you know podcast but, on her one but, day. But, Russell, hold on. You you know how the show is. You know there has to be more to that story than just what there we is. saw. There is. She could have threw her vote off. She didn't even have to write her moms down. She, her mom was going home no matter what. But she writes her name down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have nothing to say. There is. I don't know. There ain't no way I'm going home. I, I'm, I mean, you know, I, I'd bleed for my mom. You probably would too. You know? Yeah. You sure yeah, the hell ain't gonna. I, I sure I the hell. Ain't, I couldn't play with my mom or dad. Couldn't because I'd be too. Just like, like you, you know just said. Yourself. Just yeah. like you just said, you'd be too worried if they're on the other tribe. You'd be worried if they're hungry. You'd be worried if they're okay. If they're, you know, what's going on? If if anybody's treating them bad, you know that that's a good daughter. When you said that, that's that's. Seems like to me, and I don't know what their personal relationship is. She, you know, she could be the type of person that just did that. Obviously, she's, she's, uh, you know, better than I think because you said that she's the person you trust the most. I don't know her personally. Mm -hmm. All I know, you do. And, you know, uh, but, I, I. But in that game, in that game, every season could be different. You know? Like, yeah. Every season, every situation is different. I'm saying in that game, in that time, that is who I trusted in, you know, then. But right. you never know. Everything changes from season to season. Even with returning players, someone you think you might work with, you don't, you end up being enemies. Right. You could be out there. You see that, that 
and this happens, folks, and we talk about it. And I, you know, it, I've even talked to a production about a little bit about it. Uh, the pregame alliance happens, and what I think, I think it's yeah. extremely mm-hmm. dangerous, extremely dangerous, because when when the game starts, you don't know what's going on, and then whatever you've been telling to this uh, this pregame alliance. They might have, they're playing the game while they while you're doing the pregame alliance. They might be talking to someone else, you know. Yeah. So yes. that pregame alliance doesn't. Sometimes I, I I'm assuming sometimes it may work. In my opinion, it worked for Cochran, but you know I you know I don't really know the true story with all that. But the I know it didn't work for him in Heroes versus Villains because I didn't have a pregame alliance with anybody. They all knew each other. I was the one that didn't know mm-hmm. any of them. You know, 10 days later, I'm out, out back on an island. I didn't know, you know, a swinging dick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who was in the pregame alliance in that season? Did you find out afterwards? You can look at the or pictures the and tell. You know? Yeah. You you oh, can look at the pictures okay. and tell, too. You, I looked at the picture the other day, the main picture of heroes and villains, and was like, oh, they're talking to okay. that person. They're Because they had. Uh, okay. You had uh, JT. Uh, best friends with Spencer. Sp- I mean Spencer. Uh, what's his Fishback? And then Fishback okay. is dating Courtney. Okay. Courtney's out there, so you know them two have it. I heard that you know people like uh, Rupert had a bunch of pregame alliances with the other side. They told me on the other side. I'm not gonna say this name, but they were like, okay. they were like, hey. Uh, we have this all set. All we have to do is get there. That everybody was informing me about the pregame alliances because I w- they knew I didn't have any. So they were telling me, hey, mm-hmm. hey, man, we got it. All we have to do is make the merge. All we have to do is make the merge. Mm-hmm. But their problem is, even with the pregame alliance, uh, Randy was part of it, that group that I was talking about, uh, with the other mm-hmm. side being uh, Rupert and uh, Kobe and – you know, be, that was the other side. All we have to do is get them to merge. Well, Randy was part of that, and they voted him out. I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, he's part of the pregame alliance? You just lost the number. Like, uh, I'm not too good in math, but I know that. <laughs> I'm like, that's, I, can, I can add. I'm like, that's like <laughs> minus one, ain't it? <laughs> Don't need a calculator for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's like, so I was like, these guys don't know what the hell they're doing. It's funny because yeah, before just, look before the game happened, coach comes up to me at Ponderosa before we even get out there. He comes up to me and th- he didn't know who I was. Nobody knew who I was, and he starts says, "I see him," and he's like, "Come over here, come over here." So I go over, there, I go over there, and we start talking about what's going on in the game. And the whole time I'm thinking. This dude is talking to, telling Russell Hance everything right now before the game even starts. <laughs> like he, and he don't didn't even, know you. He didn't yeah, know he me. Had no idea. He didn't know me. So yeah. he's he's giving me all kind of information. Well, while he's telling me, we're behind some tree out in the middle by the by the water somewhere. I don't know Samoa. Oh, so so we nobody nobody they all looking for us. Trust me, but nobody can find us. All of a sudden, a freaking helicopter is hovering above us. <laughs> Like, do, 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 like coach i think we busted <laughs> okay wait hold up this was before the game started before, you guys snuck off before oh. the game started we snuck off and we started saying a little this and that well it didn't work out for him because i voted him out <laughs> oh, you i can't believe you guys did not just get totally yelled oh. at for that oh, look, i mean they're pretty strict oh they're really strict and they were pissed they came up to me and oh of course they came up to me. First, me and Coach, we, they start running to us like they must have been on the radio. So now here's four or five different handlers coming, and, and they come in, and I look at Coach, and I said, don't worry, Coach. I'm Russell. You're Coach. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but but deep inside, oh, I thought they might awesome. send us home. Cause I, would think, I would potentially think that. Yeah, I'm surprised you guys got away with that. No, they'll send you home. Especially you knew people. You knew people play Survivor. You try this, you're going home, my friend. They got somebody waiting on the side. Waiting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting on the side to, uh, to take your place. You you know, you have to follow the rules. But we thought since, you know, we were, you know, who we were in the seasons that we've had that we could, 
maybe get away with it. But I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little, I was acting a little cocky, but I was a little nervous that they were gonna send us home. Oof, yeah, you're pretty lucky you got away with that. I mean, that's an amazing story because they're, they usually <laughs> keep tabs on everybody pretty closely. I can't believe you guys. Well, they do, do, but they'll let you. <laughs> what, awesome. what, it, what it was was Coach was doing his Coach Chi, his Tai Chi over there in the corner. Uh, <laughs> and then he was okay, over by okay. himself, and I'm I'm sitting on the rocks looking at the waves, and I look to the right of me. I see Coach, and he's like, come on, go, like waving me over. <laughs> tai like Chi, it's a part of his move. Tai Chi he's break. Like, come on, come on. Tai Chi break. <laughs> Oh my God. So I go over there. Oh, that's incredible. I go over there. We start talking. And all of a sudden, it's like these motherfuckers, military helicopters coming right above us, like hovering, looking at us. We was like, we, we are busted, coach. Damn. They were so pissed. They were like, I know they were. Where's so Russell pissed. and coach? Get the helicopters. Get the snipers out. Oh, my God. Like, where could you guys go? Well, that's that amazing. happened with me and Rob. Yeah, that. Time. Oh, while we were playing the oh, game. Oh, really? While we were playing the game. Now, I wish this was on camera. Uh, Rob was the okay. kind of guy that always talked when they said shut up and always broke the rules. And I'm the one that gets blamed for everything. So he's like, okay. meet me over here this time. Like it's a, you know, rendezvous. Me and Boss and Rob. <laughs> I don't have a fucking okay. watch. I don't know what time. Like, I don't know. Meet me over in 10 minutes. So I start counting down, you know. Boss and Rob wants to meet me. This was early in the game, and it was at night. So he, oh so, so we, he, uh, we go all the way to the end of the beach, this, this long beach, and they have like this little indention in the rocks, like a little cave type thing, but not, not big at all, enough for two people. So, man, we, get, we I meet him over there, and we're sitting, it's pouring down rain, and we're sitting in there by ourselves with no cameras. And we nobody's gonna find we think nobody's gonna find us all of a sudden while we're talking we see lights shining everywhere like running like looking for <gasps> Os osama bin laden just just lights flashing everywhere oh it's like oh, they gosh. know we're missing and so he's like yeah i just wanted to tell you man like we talk a while hey you can trust me he's telling me yeah i want to play with you man this kind of thing and then he says you're gonna be my amber without the, you're gonna be my amber without the color <laughs> I'm like, when he said that, I'm like, oh, that's so TV worthy. Because he says it, he says it to poverty too, the same thing. You're going to be my amber without the cuddle on. Yeah, right. You're going to cuddle with her. You ain't just going to, you ain't going to cuddle with me. Oh, God, that's so, so funny. So he's oh, telling wow. me this, and I'm so aggressive in that game. You may get to see it uh -huh. one day, uh, but we don't know. So, but, uh, so. When I'm out there playing, uh, playing with him, and he's like, "Yo, oh, you know, we can, you can trust me, and this and that." I was like, "Man, they, we need to get this cam, this conversation back on, you know, live where the cameras can see it, because he looks like mm -hmm. an idiot mm -hmm. telling me this, you know, because I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, uh, I'm in control of the, of the whole uh, or tribe. I was in control of that tribe, not him, but he was so demanding and wanting to be in control that." That uh, he's that type of player. He even I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember in the third, the third or fourth or fifth or tenth time he played, he the season he won. Yeah, or which yeah, one? the season he won. He was controlling yeah. what they ate. Like he told them they couldn't eat fish. They all caught fish. The other team caught fish, and he's like, "Oh no, we ain't eating it." Like wait, and they listened to him. They didn't. I eat, know. They didn't eat the other tribe's fish. Cause he said, "Don't eat the fish." He, huh. it, it's. Hey, that's I don't a, remember that, but now I want to go back and watch because right. it is that season in particular is. I don't find it to be the most fascinating season, right. but I, I do going. find it interesting how they followed him into oh, that battle. Funny. Essentially, it was at funny. Every, it was crazy, you know? and it, yeah. I like to say it behind it the crazy. scenes stories. Uh, so me and Rob was. Going, I I don't like Rob. Uh, I don't know if that's a surprise to you, but I don't think he. I don't like him as a person. I don't. I mean, I don't hate anybody. Why? I don't hate anybody because he okay. I, he is that type of guy that always sat in the corner with the popular guys that didn't give you a time of day and that bullied you. He reminds me of that of that type of guy, you know. And, and I didn't like those guys okay. in high school. 
So, you know, he's the mm-hmm. type of guy that uh, that tries to control every situation in life. I feel sorry for his wife, but that's what it is. That's what I think. I'm not saying that's the case, okay. but that's how I perceive him. So we do this thing uh, right before Redemption Island where me and him are doing commercials to promote the show. So he's, he, mm-hmm. he, you know, I invite him to the room. I, uh, we ordered uh, some Coronas. I pay for it. <laughs> so I bought, I got a bunch of, uh, we was on the cover of TV Guide. So I signed a whole bunch of them and gave them to him, like 20 of them here. You could sign it and you can give it to your, your family for Christmas or this and that, you know, so he can, you know, just, just enjoy stuff like that. He took them. Didn't sure. even, didn't just took him like he was like, like it was no big deal like, whatever, and he's just sitting there the whole time laughing at the cast members. He said, "Man," and he's telling me what happened out there with him. He's like, "I had them so controlled. They would," he said, "They, uh, we did little groups. We did little buddy system." And he just stops, starts laughing. He said, "Yeah, I had a buddy <sighs> system to where they would." They we couldn't go anywhere without the other person, and they fell for it. And he's laughing, and I'm like, "Oh man, this is gonna be wow. hell." Because I got voted out early, and so you know, and, and the relationships that he that that he starts out there, like with, I've heard stories with, you know, I'm gonna tell, I, ain't gonna, I know a lot of stories, but I ain't gonna say any stories okay. that's that mm-hmm. would demean people if I wasn't actually there to see it myself. But, right. Right. But he he befriends them. They think he's their friend, like Philip. And Philip, t- you know, I've talked to Philip lately to try to get him on the show. And, he, you know, the guy, you can't get off the phone when you talk to him. And he's like, <laughs> he, and he starts telling me how he, he, he hates Rob and this and that. And Rob's a, all a joke and, uh, you know, just says all kind of things. I'm like, well, what happened? And he's like, man, he, you know, he doesn't invite me here or there. Or he, you know, acts like he's my friend. He don't even post about my book. I asked him for a favor to post about my book. He don't even do that. Like, come on, man, post about that poor guy's book. I mean, just, you're not that important. If you go to Legend Season, I'm coming for you. Right off the bat, I'm coming for you. Oh, and, boy. So, so it, that's okay. That's fine. That's how it is. Do you know why I'm coming for him? Because he doesn't know how to play fair. He can't play with, with people. He can't play with me. If I'm like, oh, let's do a, a secret alliance, me and Rob, nobody would expect it. Yeah, nobody would expect it. But he would stab me in the back right off the bat. Mm-hmm. I know he can't do it. When he on Heroes versus Villains, he's trying to get me out. I'm trying to play with the mm-hmm. guy. I, they even have a scene of me saying, man, I'm trying to play with you, man. You trying to vote me out? Like I'm trying. I, you, so you know, he just he gets that one track mind. He comes after you, and that's it. And that's if mm-hmm. there's a legend season, he will be there, and I will be there. Of and, course. And then guess yeah. what? Mm-hmm. We're gonna be head to head, and we're gonna be coming. If we're on the same tribe, then we're gonna be coming out. You just stay out the way, Kelly. Just stay out the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't get in the middle of that. No. Bullfight. Just, yeah. I'll, I'll be just sure to. step to the side. <laughs> and I wish that I was the person. <laughs> I wish I was the person that could actually step to the side and let two other people fight. Because that's not how you want to mm-hmm. start legends, fighting with somebody else. You know, you want to be mm-hmm. uh, kind of behind the scenes. But that's impossible when I have Sandra gunning for me, Rob gunning for me, Rupert gunning for me. I mean, Jerry gunning for me. I got people gunning, wanting me out. They don't even want to start playing their game until I'm gone. You know what I mean? And what did I do? Yeah, for- and that makes you want to go back. <laughs> and you still want to go back after knowing uh, all of that. No, I didn't. What you just I don't know for sure if I would play again. I'm just saying if I did. I know I'm I'm well, in pretty did. big okay. trouble, but I do have some positive things too. You can beat me at the end for the million dollars. There you go. <laughs> Why not take Russell to the end? <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna vote for me for a million dollars. It just ain't gonna happen. Do I you can, really believe that? I play the best possible way I could ever play. I like I keep like I say it's maybe not the best player now I say that I'm I'm okay with saying I may not be the best player ever but I think I had one of the best performances ever and I and with that performance I did not win so something about me they just and for sure now if I went to the end Kelly if we go to the end of that game you you winning so uh, 
Just well, letting now, you know. Yeah, because now that you're talking shit about everybody. Oh, no. I've been talking shit about them for a long time, though. I <laughs> Ain't know. No, I, I don't talk shit about the new people. I just, oh, well, just, uh, but I can, well, I can talk shit about the people I played against. And then, you know, if they talk yeah. shit about me or post something or say something on their podcast, then yes, I can say things. It gives me the right to talk shit back mm-hmm. if you talk shit about me. If, you know, mm-hmm. I don't do that. If you're, if it's a nice person, you know, like for instance, you, this is a t- another topic, but I said something nice. I said, hey, man, when you want to come on the show to the Dr. Wheel guy that plays Big Brother. Well, this guy, this guy goes crazy. He starts saying all kind of stuff about me. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> I'm How did, I knew that that would come up. But right. here's the thing about social media is that, I mean, people rile people up on purpose. Yes, like, I get that, think? but I'm just trying to invite him on the show. He don't have to blast like like stuff that he don't even know. He's talking about all that spoiler stuff that happened. It's not even true. If you want to know what happened, then I with him, I would tell him exactly what happened. You know, with you, mm-hmm. I would tell you exactly what happened. You know, there's things mm-hmm. that happen with that situation that that, uh, you know, I can defend myself. And he doesn't mm-hmm. ask me none of that. He just comes at me. And when you come at me, mm-hmm. then I get like a pit bull. You're like, I'm that pit yeah. bull. I am that pit bull <laughs> that's friendly to all your little kids around. But as soon as one smacks me around, I'm grabbing them by the neck. <laughs> Oof. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, that was rather entertaining. Yeah, so you've seen um, that? You've seen that? I'm doing outside. a... Oh, we doing a... I'm going to yeah, find yeah, a... Saw. Hey, any big brothers out there that played the game that want to <laughs> talk about Dr. Will, we're going to have a whole <laughs> podcast about Dr. Will, about how he's a bitch. Okay, but hold on. But hold on. <laughs> that aside... What? Were you a Will fan before that Yes, happened? yes. Because I think he's amazing. No, I was. I was a Will fan, but okay. it's like... It's okay. on. I don't know. You, and then you respect he respect deli- his game. What? You you respect his game, but you don't respect necessarily things that have happened recently. No, he's one of those guys that CBS puts on a pedestal, and then he believes that he belongs on that pedestal. And then when somebody like Russell Hans, one of the biggest icons in the in Survivor's TV <laughs> history. Is that I would think that that's the case. <laughs> Talks to him, he comes at me so he could be a little bit more popular in his like he, talking about milking the situation, you know. And when he could say, "Sure, I'll come on the show, man." That's sure. Like he's still playing the game because that's what you're saying. He's still playing uh-huh. the game. Still playing uh-huh. a, this this little oh he just just to rile him up type game for uh-huh. what? Uh huh. I'm a professional. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional. Well, I I laugh I laugh at social media. I uh, you know I no one uh, no one necessarily um, that did Big Brother or Survivor, but I've had many a troll on uh, come across my Twitter Twitter timeline, if you will, and uh, I've had to put some people in their place as well. So I, I know how it goes in the social media world. Yeah, we're doing a. Uh... A, a live pregame, uh, what is it, uh, pre-show before it even starts, a party uh, September in L.A. You need to come with us, the 26th. Oh, fun. It's 27th. Like, we're going to have a big old party with the uh, Patreon listeners, and uh, uh, we're going to have, you know, I want to have at least 50 survivors there. And, and I would like to have that list of my legends, my queens there. Sari, poverty, mm-hmm. you, you know, and of course my uh, my side hoe is gonna be there, Bryce. Well, listen, if you get Sari and Parv, oh what? I gotta get I them for you to come. Seriously, consider it. I yeah, gotta this get is them. How, this is how I work. You know, I gotta I strike deals. <laughs> oh, really? I wonder if we could play together. <laughs> I wonder I don't if know. we can play. You are the type that I go for. Just saying. You do why? You, because I go for the pretty. I go for the pretty girls. Why not? If you gotta mm-hmm. suffer on an island, you know, thirty nine mm-hmm. days. Why do you want a dude with a ponytail? <laughs> oh God! Well, you still get the long hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get the hair you can pull. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> 
This is a little different than a regular podcast. <laughs> you said it, not me. Oh no, it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the whole deal here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So one last mm-hmm. question, Kelly. Mm-hmm. The world wants to know. Okay. Will you play again? Oh God. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if the <clears throat> time were right, then yes, it's not off the table. Let's put it that way. Big Brother. Hey, I heard that you were supposed to play Big Brother. What are those rumors? Well, about? I'm here now. Yeah, yeah. I know. So I'm about to go. In, they let me podcast. Up? No, they let me podcast till I go in the house. I'm I'm in sequester right now. No, you're not. That's they're letting me podcast. You're gonna, no, they're not. <laughs> yes. I don't know if no, I'm supposed you're to. Not we're not going to release this podcast. Look, this is what's funny about this. We're not releasing this podcast once I start airing. So, bam. So, guys, y'all stay tuned. I'll be in the Big Brother house. Shut up. <laughs> you going to watch? Whatever. I'm going to be the first person. Uh, well, I do watch, I'm gonna be, I do watch Big Brother. I I'm going to be the. Brother. I'll be the first person to do something in that house. Like I'll be the first person to, con- I'll be the first person to actually conceive a baby in the house. Oh, oh god! <laughs> oh, I don't think that's anything to be proud of. I don't know if that's that might have happened already though. Oh, that's ew, hard to believe that know. that wouldn't have happened. But yeah, I'm going in the house. You gonna watch it? Hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. Wouldn't you be shocked if you see me walk up in that house? I would actually be super shocked. Yeah, so if it happens... <laughs> Why? I, right now, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But they would... Uh, wouldn't it be interesting, though? Yeah, it would be interesting, but I think for you, like, what would be the benefit of doing that? Like, why would you want to do that? Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't. Let me go you tell them I changed my mind. <laughs> Let me go tell them I changed my mind. <laughs> I ain't doing it. You, <laughs> Kelly Wentworth, Kelly Wentworth convinced me not to go. <laughs> so that's it. I'm not the going. The prize money's not big enough. <laughs> now that now the public knows the reason I'm not in the house is because I just changed my mind. <laughs> okay. So there, there, you go. there you go. So now, so now they could expect to see you or not see you. But no, nah, I ain't going now. I'm done. I'm gonna <laughs> wait on. Okay, I'm gonna good. wait on legends to come after Rob. <laughs> You heard it here first, people. <laughs> right. All right, Kelly. Well, I sure yeah. appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate it. It was a good time chatting with you. All right, honey. Well, I'll talk to you later. Enjoy okay, the rest of your day. Have a good night. Okay, Bye. well, you too. Bye. Bye-bye.